Hello, everyone. Thank you for being here on Lily Sky Messages. Don't forget to click like on the video. It does help the channel. All right. So happy Supermoon in Capricorn, Wednesday, July 13th, 2022. So I'm going to do the general reading for this full moon. And it's a super full moon. So the moon appears closer to Earth. Very... Um, strong energy that you can use for your manifestation and your meditation. And then I'll get into each sign's reading. But the main reading is for everyone. You know, you can all benefit from it. All right. So this is a full moon in Capricorn and it's very practical. Okay. And it uses his actions to bring balance to their life, right? To feel fulfilled and to overcome challenges. Very powerful for that grounding energy, stability energy. So definitely uh, tap into the energy for, for this particular full moon, all right? It's just going to be powerful for anyone that feels like they need more balance in their life. And it's going to be extremely powerful for interpersonal focus. So focusing on uh, you know, on your external world and how you relate to people that is not necessarily close, close to you, right? And how you take care of, you know, your work, your family, your domestic life, your work, family environment, and your creativity, how they match together, okay? So, and it and it's definitely going to put a mark on after the full moon leading up to the next new moon in between that time how do you use your time in the in uh when the when the sun goes down basically right so sunset so the way you spend your evenings will be very um powerful for you so make sure that it's spent either in a way that you need more maybe family time or love or maybe at night or night or sunset you your energy comes more alive so you can be more creative so how do you use that time frame that can be um something powerful as well so the energy of this full moon is all about you achieving what you want i achieve your earthly will to survive so with this full moon you can look at what are your goals what goals do you have do you need to change these goals somehow to make them more realistic and more um, needy, needing for what you need right now, right? So it's more grounding. And how do you use your time? So using your time wisely. And what what can I let go of to make room for what I want? So that's what you can ask yourself. So Capricorn in the fourth house of Cancer. So happy birthday to all the Cancerian zodiac signs. And Capricorn is in your fourth house, Cancer. All right. So the Capricorn is in the fourth house with Pluto, and they're also in the IC. And this is the second of three super full moons that we have coming up. So, you know, this is a great time to use the energy of this super full moon to really get in tune with our emotions, make peace with our emotions, and get in balance with ourselves. Capricorn in the fourth house, this can be a powerful time for you to evolve as a person. You may find that you have experiences or experience a great transformation for yourself. Maybe you had like a haha -ha moment. Maybe you just woke up, you had a dream, you had a meditation, but it's a transforming moment that you know, happen maybe right before the full moon or, you know, the day before the full moon or on the full moon, you're feeling that strong energy. Now, Pluto comes with some restrictive energy when it's in Capricorn. So you will have to really be strong-willed to continue with these changes that you need to make. Now, it will take a lot of hard work, but it will pay off in the end. You will feel and know that you need to make these changes and it will come naturally to you. But being in the physical world, you really need to put the energy towards all these great changes 
that will benefit you, that will benefit your life, that will bring balance to your life. Now, it's important to get organized and to manage yourself. You know, time management and also daily affirmations can help. You really want to get in touch with your own personal drive, your ambition. So this is a great time for you to reintroduce yourself to yourself. And this is like just tapping into your original self. Like, you know, at a certain age, you knew what you wanted. You knew, knew who you are. You know where you want to go. Tap into that. Now, Pluto in the fourth house is about, you know, work through or working through or avoiding tensions in the home. So certain things you can avoid, certain things you're going to have to like, you know, find the solution. So what is the solution that you've been avoiding or need to gain, right? So what's the solution that you can gain and what is the solution you're avoiding? Maybe it's something, learning something new or, you know, just stepping out of the old self into the new. Maybe the old self, you needed that for a while, but then it was time to transition into the new self. So you want to really avoid arguments with anyone about things that they're passionate about. So this is like in general, you know, people close to you or people that are acquaintances, you just want to avoid having passionate arguments with anyone um, about, you know, oh, their home life or, or anything like that, anything that, you know, or where they're from. So you want to focus your energy on the work that you need to do. And Pluto is so good at that. We'll help with that if we use it in a positive way. So this position also has like great interest in science as well, Pluto in the fourth house. So maybe there's something within the subject of science that you can learn from that can help you. Maybe it's with mind, body, psychology, hormones, you know, it could be anything like that, that can really help you understand yourself or another person. You know, because people are made up of, there's so much, so much to a person. There's a nice side, the angry side, the jealous side. So we all have different sides, but mainly most of us, you know, will have one side of us that's our main true self. Okay. So it's just important to, to think about family matters like life, death, your legacy and regeneration. So whatever it is that you're going through, if it's negative towards the fourth house and family, the decisions you're making right now with Capricorn being the master of the matrix of this world, it's going to affect the rest of your life. And you can't make those positive changes right away. Maybe there'll be a little bit, there might be another opening again, because all of these alignments are different portal openings for you to make positive changes. Okay. Um, and when I say positive changes, maybe sometimes it's protecting yourself. So it might be an argument that needs to happen that will shift your life into a, a positive place, or it could be, you know, a, a loving relationship, right? So just to be clear with that now, you know, out of positive comes great things out of negative comes great things too. Okay. So it's time to look at your relationships, especially with your mother, it could represent a powerful mother, um, Pluto in the fourth house. It could be power struggles within your family. It could be deep bonds within your family relationships that could be good or could be bad. And any kind of transformation, any kind of changes that needs to happen in the home life. You may find that you care deeply about your home life and feel that you need to be in control of it, maybe for yourself. And in reference to job, career, and home, very much uh, Capricorn energy. So you're going to look at, you know, how loyal you are, how dedicated you are, and how responsible you are to yourself and your fourth house issues, okay? Which is the home, um, parents, your roots, and your insecurity. So what are you insecure about? The fourth house is about that nurturing energy. Nurture your private world, your inner world, that I nurture myself energy. So taking a good look at that. And just you're looking at how you match up with your loyalty, dedication, and responsibility. Now, your parents, um, in the fourth house, it could also indicate, you know, a parent dying at a very young age. So that could affect your childhood or even um, whenever one parent died, maybe there's you know, feelings regarding that for you. 
So your parents would have a big impact on these qualities that you have. Now, if Pluto is in your fourth house, you and, and this is in like your birth chart, okay? So if Pluto is in your fourth house, you may find that later on in life, you may choose to kind of want to be alone and work on big projects. You may find that you were drawn to having passion for your customs, your culture, and your family tradition. So you might create something around that, okay, that feels healing and, and uh, informative for you. You may find that you're looking into real estate at this time because uh, Pluto is in the fourth house, okay, and that's just general for everyone. But if you're native to Pluto in the fourth house, you're born with Pluto in the fourth house, you'll be really successful in real estate. So if Pluto is not in your fourth house, but you're thinking about buying property, you want to be careful about where you buy it, right? And you might look at what's in your fourth house. How's your fourth house set up? And read what your fourth house is about. And then you can make your decision on that. So that's an, a way that you can give yourself a reading and see if it matches up with the decisions you're trying to make right now in your life. Maybe buying land is a good idea for you. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's running away or pushing away from something. Maybe it's a good idea, but finding the right location and make sure it feels right with you. Remember that astrology and the planets and all the other influences, it's just influencing you to make the best opportunity and to make the best positive changes, okay? And Pluto deals with a lot of fear, that you may have, especially regarding your home issues. Now, with Pluto being in the fourth house, it can reveal a lot of secrets. So say that you had a bad um, communication with someone and they were truly horrible. They will always deflect and try to lie about things to make themselves look good. So the secret will that's surrounding their true behavior will be revealed. So, you know, a person can say what they want, but people will see what, what does not add up, right? So the truth is never hidden. Now, here's a power move, and this mostly has to do with Pluto in the 12th house, but wherever Pluto is, it it's really helping you with the changes that you need to be, to do. So with Pluto, you know, a power move is really staying off to yourself and figuring out the positive changes that you need to be and it's really need to do and you're protecting your energy and it also will help you to stay in control of yourself and really do the things that you feel that you need to get done, right? So the IC in the fourth house and the IC is really um, that kind of private sector of yourself, okay? So the IC with, with the with with the I see in the fourth house, it's really focusing on the deep truths within yourself. And with Capricorn in the I see, it's looking at challenges and mastering these difficult situation or difficult tasks. So it's really finding discipline and the willpower to solve or overcome whatever your problem is that you're going through right now. So Capricorn naturally wants to thrive in uncomfortable or hard situations. And a lot of us might not like that. Some of us that we don't like that stress, right? But it's the work that needs to get done and just look at it in a positive way. So this Capricorn energy, they naturally like to bring order to any kind of chaos situation. Now, you know, like I said, not everyone will thrive in this situation. So if you find that you are avoiding something that you need to do, do that thing that it, that you need to do because it's necessary, right? And, you know, this work is going to help you to survive. It's like your daily survival task, the daily work that needs to get done. And the thing that you're fighting the most at, is a thing that you know that you need to do. So just know that you will benefit and grow from it as a person. And Pluto deals with lots of fears. Um, and at this full moon, it's a super full moon, so it's really big, right? So it's your chance to really rise above your fear. And, you know, it's like 
finding good techniques like coaching, therapy, daily affirmations. But the thing is that the solution is in the action, right? It's in the action and mixed with a positive mind and using these techniques, it could really help you. So let's look at two. I, I found a few aspects now. Well, I want to focus on this one aspect. So there's two. So Saturn squares Uranus, five degrees, 52 minutes. So if you meditate, definitely meditating for 52 minutes, this is like tension, right? It's a tension aspect that has to do with mastering oneself and fighting against something, right? So people with this aspect are said to have no cares, no principles, and display chaotic behavior. So they might be cool one moment and then they just self-destruct everything good that they've built, right? So on the other hand, they can be very organized and proficient at what they're doing. So not everyone will see the negative side to them because we all have like three sides. I think the yogis, you know, say that there's three sides to us, right? And the one you keep to yourself is the, is the real you. So, and the most, some of us, you know, the empaths and the amazing, wonderful people, they do show their real self, more of their real self than others, right? So that negative side of them. So if they show this real side of them, that how they treat people that they don't respect, the people that they don't show this side to would not tolerate that behavior, right? And they can also have unpredictable behaviors that just cause more problems than usual because that Uranus energy is fighting against and that Saturn energy is very stubborn but knowledgeable, right? And the Uranus energy likes their freedom even though they're, it, it could be a, a very um, fighting against energy. It's like when it's not used correctly. Now, the way that they think can be very strict, very logical, and too rigid, right? So, dealing with someone that truly cares for them, they, this is how they lose people. They can tend to look down on others, even if that person is kind to them, right? So if you've been having this type of experience with someone, you can do two things, right? Um, if you're experiencing this with someone, you can protect your energy from them. Realize that maybe, you know, this is how they are. This is how they choose to be and not living in denial about it. And they they just tend to, you know, create more rumors or excuses for their behavior. And people will see through it. So the best thing to do is is just to not allow it to bother you. And your best defense is to continue just being yourself, focusing on the the best things about you and what you can improve and what you need to get done. Now, another way of looking at it is that this person that, you, that you've had a negative uh, experience with, they can reflect on their life. They can see where they've gone wrong, but they're not going to share that, right? And they even might have some self-doubt around whatever that situation is. And the best thing to keep in mind is that, you know, they're responsible for their behavior and their life experience. So let's look at Neptune now. Neptune uh, in the sixth house is a good reminder to be practical. So it bounces off this Pluto experience in the fourth house where, where now Pluto or Neptune, Neptune is like, okay, you're not being, is not realistic about work and stability and so on. So flipping it, now we're going to say Neptune in the sixth house is a good reminder to be practical about your ideas regarding your job and work, like that whole survival mode, right? So maybe you can manifest in that dreamy Neptune state and work on it physically every day with this Capricorn energy. Stay focused and you know, learn, learn new skills, stay focused daily, get into a routine, a ritual, an empowering ritual, do a cleansing ritual. You know, um, this can also affect your mind and your health when you're not being realistic about what you need to get done as far as work, right? So taking into consideration positive solutions to bring peace and harmony to your mind that can also 
help you better your health, okay? So you can focus on energies on Neptune sextile Pluto, which ha which is happening at two degrees, seven minutes. So a short kind of meditation affirmation, right? This is like a harmonious aspect with Neptune sextiling Pluto because the sextile is a 60 degree angle that is complementary to Neptune and Pluto, right? And these en it's like an energy exchange of creation and it's a productive reaction. So just think of what tools can you use that is like a mix of meditation and help you to get to that transformation where you need to be, right? So there's there could be a whole meditation around that. So this can be used to make peace in your mind, body, and soul, or mind, body, and spirit, right? Balancing out the masculine and feminine energy within yourself, having a peaceful attitude and outlook towards yourself and your life. You can use this to make peace with your current situation and look at the work that you're doing as a stepping stone to where you really want to be in the future. Nothing truly happens overnight. Just remember that. So this is a great way to, you know, keep your mind focused and realize that, you know, small and big transformation in your life happens. And when, when you know, Pluto makes changes, it, it, it's, it could be death, just really sudden devastation. But the the actions that we take today determines our experience for tomorrow. So every lesson we overcome helps us to build our future. So just stay in positive and consistent and making the changes that make sense. OK, so let's look at a fun love um, energy here. Venus is in Gemini in the ninth house of Sagittarius at 24 degrees for 50 minutes. So Venus in the ninth house can indicate you know, getting married. And if you're a native of that, if you're born with that aspect of um, Venus in the ninth house in Vedic astrology, this is good for someone born with, with uh, Venus in the ninth house. Venus in the ninth house can be, can help bring about more optimistic way of thinking, love, and a cheerful personality. Gemini in the ninth house of Sagittarius, right? So they're opposite signs on the chart. So this is good for both signs and good for everyone to tap into this energy, right? So if if your sign happens to be in the ninth house, which Gemini is, along with Venus, you can benefit from the energy as well. So this can be a great uh, energy for both those signs. And just don't miss the opportunity for a positive love and relationship. You can have that with, with yourself, you know, sending love to yourself. You can have it by sending love to someone that you love or um, just working things out or making a positive change. So you want to trust your intuition when dealing with communicating with others, especially if it's not good communicating at the moment. So Venus in the ninth house enjoys being in love, right? But they because it's in the ninth house, they really like their freedom and independence. So then that ninth house energy is about traveling. So maybe something will happen with love within, you know, July and August where you travel, you know? So this is like a house of freedom, love, and pleasure. Okay. So Sagittarius energy, the ninth house energy is very passionate. Okay. Um, and it's hard to keep them entertain. If someone has a strong Sagittarius in the chart, if they don't love you or care for you, it's hard. Nothing you do will be right because they, they will be wrong. They'll just want to want whatever they want and not care about um, how much they've invested into someone and that person invested in them. But on a positive note in the fourth house, it's all about home, family, and love. So it's a positive time for love, okay? And for travel, and it's the house of philosophy, you know? So it's just a, a positive thought and higher knowledge. So really being wiser than your current self, right? So let's look, there's so many things that we can go over. So let's do the reading for each sign, okay? So let me bring that chart up and we will do the reading for each sign. So let's start with, Sagittarius. Now, Sag, or let's start with Capricorn. Duh. Capricorn has Pluto and the 
full moon. So we know that's about home and about, you know, really maybe making personal family time for healing. That can really help. And Pluto's in retrograde. So Pluto really is in retrograde. It looks like it's moving slowly. And just realize that, you know, not to rush any he family healing. Just do the best you can with the supermoon energy. And if you realize that it's a rough situation, but you've made up your mind, maybe not talk to someone in the family that will be negative towards it, right? So you have to know what works best for you, okay? So Capricorn, you're just focusing this full moon on healing your transformation and basically everything that I just said before, because it, bro it broke it down. And it's a private matter. So really for Capricorn and everyone involved and strongly even can Cancerian sign, because uh, Capricorn is your opposite, it's between you and that person that you care about. Maybe others won't understand. Sagittarius is in the third house of Gemini. So it's a lot of um, breaking things down to the beginning meaning, right? And how do you communicate with yourself and how do you live freely and enjoy yourself without judgment and kind of having the spirit of a Gemini, which is in their true nature, they don't care about others' opinion because that's going to block their happiness. And we should all have that type of understanding and really caring about yourself and not feeling alone and not feeling lonely. So just know that you can tap into that energy of Gemini of not feeling lonely. Even when they feel lonely for a second, they're like, bump this, like, I'm amazing. Like, you know, they just can just find the fun and enjoy their life. Uh, Scorpio, you still have the South Node and you're in the second net, second house and it's in retrograde. So with the second house, you really want to focus on your money and the things that you have and the things you value. So making time for those that you love and really focusing on making sure that you are doing with this Capricorn energy. Everyone has to be like, what do I need to get done? I better jump on it right now, you know, and make sure I start it because six months from now I could have a different, happier story, you know? So it's just making positive changes. Libra, you're in the first house. So you're thinking about what's best for you. You're in the ascending. So the attention is fully on you. There's no planets there. So you're really focusing on your first house which is your, your appearance, what you look like to others. So maybe trying to reinvent yourself or making sure that you don't look as bad as you feel that you, you might. And it's about, you know, the outward appearance of everything. So, you know, seeing what the real issue is and really working on it will benefit you in the first house rather than um, putting up an image that isn't real. So use the first house to really strengthen your true self and the true issues. Virgo, you're in the 12th house. So this is a state of dreaming and manifesting. So Virgos manifest what you want. Don't self-sabotage yourself. Uh, find time to yourself to meditate and really tap into that and make it a reality. Virgo is very much realistic. So whatever you visualize, you can make it happen. And Virgos, you're ruled by Mercury, like Gemini, so you can communicate that so strongly. The 11th house, you have beautiful, amazing Leo, okay? So Leo in the 11th house, you are working behind the scenes in, in getting the support you need, whether it's for business or for whatever it is. It's just how you work together with others and, and keeping up your best self to inspire you and inspire the ones that you love. So right now you're in charm mode to charm others and work on your goals and really what you aspire to do next. So, you know, you don't have to focus too much on what is negative, but focus on what is positive and really affirm that and work towards that, Leo. And you can definitely do that. The 10th house, we have Cancer. Cancer, your Capricorn is your opposite sign. You can really vibe off this full moon as well. You have the sun. So happy birthday to all Cancers. You have um, Mercury and you have Lilith. So Lilith being in your sign, definitely do research Cancer on that and, and really do the positive work with Lilith in your sign and really um, look at all aspects of things. Don't just look at what's important to you. Look at the bigger picture because maybe your partner is looking towards the future and building themselves, but 
you are stuck in the same chapter that you're in. But when Lilith is in your sign, you need to make a shift that will benefit you once Lilith leaves your sign. Lilith, Lilith was in Gemini sign, so they had a lot of work to do. And you, uh, when it when now that it's in your sign, make sure that you all Cancerians research what Lilith means in your sign and see where your life is and how you can adapt that for a positive way. You are in the MC, so you have a lot of attention on you. You're at center stage and just mind how you communicate with yourself and others. Um, everything that you do with Lilith, Mercury and the sun is going to shine on your work life. So you might be getting like really good information about your work. You know, maybe you're recognized at work. Um, so this could all be positive and it's based on how you communicate with others. So it's just recognized. Okay. Uh, Gemini, you have Venus. So this is love energy. So for 50 minutes today, meditate on love and how it affects the ninth house. So maybe you, you'll be traveling for love. Um, maybe love will be tra traveling to you, Gemini. So it has to do with traveling and also higher education. So go after what you love and what you're passionate about. Uh, as far as higher education and maybe writing, publishing something, uh, you know, everything to do with the ninth house is going to be good and around love. So this will definitely be working for you. So definitely tap into that energy in the full moon. Taurus, you have Mars, you have Uranus and you have the North Node. So where do you need to go? North Node is in retrograde. So where do you need to go? Really think clearly before you make any decisions that has to do with what you're fighting for, what what is what it, what you're passionate about, really work it in a smooth way and remember that you're ruled by Venus. So using honey more than vinegar and salt can get you to what you want to accomplish with this Uranus energy and also with the Merc with the Mars energy and you're really fighting for um, money that you feel you deserve and know you deserve. The, the love and and um, the love and admiration that you deserve in the eighth house and you know the things that you worked for that you had to train yourself for you know give yourself props like big yourself up like feel good about yourself because you worked hard and you taught yourself how to do things okay so admire yourself and congratulate yourself for all the hard work you've put in to teach yourself how to do something overcome challenges from childhood everything. It makes you how wonderful you are, Taurus, and how strong and amazing and beautiful you are. So just recognize that and recognize your North Node in your birth chart, where you need to go, where you need to be. Recognize the North Node in the eighth house and the meaning of that for this full moon. So, you know, with this Capricorn energy, it all has to do with really setting yourself up for work um, and also setting yourself up to receive from your work. So make sure that, you know, contracts, your dealings, whatever you give your time to benefits you. Now, relationships is, is, is hitting on Aries. So Aries, you have Chiron, you have uh, Jupiter, and you have the Fortune energy, and it's in the descending. So make sure that you keep your relationships private. And you don't tell everyone you're dating someone. Just say, I like to keep my relationship private. And if I, I'm in a relationship, I don't talk about it. So just be mindful of that because you won't suffer from like needing to heal if the relationship ends or if something happens. It's just really keeping yourself positive. And a lot of, a lot of um, blessings and luck for anyone getting married or in a partnership, it will benefit you. Just be aware of other people. Intentions might not be good, so just be private about your relationship, right? But you can be very lucky in, in the connections you make, whether it's love or work, okay? Now, the sixth house, you have Pisces. So Pisces has Neptune, and you want to focus on your work life. Your, you know, make sure that you're taking care of yourself and you're making improvements that will serve you, others as well, but make sure that you are uh, comfortable with these changes that need to be made, all right? So that's going to be really important. Aquarius, you have Saturn, so definitely uh, take good advice 
uh, and look at, at strengthening your relationship with those that you love. If you love someone, they know that you love them, you love them. So make sure that you show that. And you're, you're getting a lot of this Leo fifth house energy. So you might feel more creative, more passionate, um, more uh, communicative in a personal way, you know, telling someone that you love them and really fostering and building strong relationships will be really good. And really having structure to your life. So you might want like a better relationship with someone. If you were in a relationship that's not good, then you'll want a better relationship or a new relationship, or you want to make sure that you're protecting your relationship energetically, spiritually, mentally. So that would be a really good place for you to focus your energy. All right. And, and, you know, having some fun, letting yourself have some fun and be creative. Just enjoy the, these next coming weeks, right? Just let, you know, lay back, relax, have fun and really enjoy yourself. All right. So that's the 12 side signs of reading. I hope you guys enjoy it. Please click like and enjoy this uh, full moon and just take advantage of the high peak today. All right. Peace.